flow. In this video, I will quickly show you how to use uh, clustering. And uh, clustering allows you to combine simple fragments into more complex con concave groups. It works uh, for all fragmentation types except uh, slicing. So slicing doesn't support it. And first, let me create just a basic fragmentation just to show you how it works. So this just the three, 30 Warner fragments uh, clustering is off. And this example is the same setup, but in this case, I turn off clustering here and set it to count to three, which means I want to get three complex fragments. So here they are. So this is how it works. First, it fragments object into this simple Warner fragments, the 30 Warner fragments, and then combine them into three uh, groups. And uh, if I will go to wireframe, you'll see that there are no any, any triangles inside. So it glue them together, it removes all the fragments inside, all the surface inside between these clustered fragments and glue all the fragments together. So they start to look like this complex uh, shape. And as you can see, it's not convex anymore, it's concave. So this is probably will be a problem when you will try to simulate these fragments, they will push each other. But well, who knows, maybe you need some uh, convex fragments as well for your game. In this case, I set my count of eight. So uh, in a, let me set it to eight. And the same 30 uh, Horner fragments. And you can see how, um, like, uh, I have the same amount of fragments, like here and here, but this fragments looks much more interesting than this simple convex shapes. And in this example, I set my Vorno amount to 400 just to, um, Great, uh, just to show you how it works with more fragments. And again, right now, clustering is off, just to show you how it looks like without clustering. In this example, I set my cluster count to 10. And now you can see how it looks like now. I guess much better than this uh, simple, regular, straight um, Voronoi uh, fragments. They are good if you want to create like hundreds of them, but if you want just a, uh, several, uh, but well uh, detailed fragments, this is how you can create them. Also, uh, there is one disadvantage right now. Uh, for now, it still keeps all these triangles from original fragments, but this is something we will fix in one of the next builds. So the surface will be optimized and there won't be so much unnecessary triangles like uh, now but it will look exactly the same later. So in this example, I set the same 400 fragments, but with just three clusters. Uh, okay, so this is uh, how I can get this detail, this curvy con concave shapes using just the regular Warner fragmentation. And uh, I, showed, I use this example just to show you that you can make it look even better uh, using this debris feature. So Debris allows you to create uh, some, uh, to, not to create, but actually not to put uh, some fragments inside clusters and keep them as this. So there are two main properties like this amount and this layers. So amount, uh, first this amount, it measures in percents and it defines uh, how many percents from the uh, first layer of fragments and layer, I mean, the fragments which are on the edge so every cluster has its layer of fragments. So first layer, this, these are the fragments that are closer to this edge. Second layer will be closer to the center and so on. So amount defines amount of um, percent of fragments from the first layer and uh, which will not be part of the cluster. So in this case, I'll set it to 50%, I fragment. And here you can see that some fragments, they are not part of these clusters. So I leave them as this. And again, if I will demolish uh, this object, it will be much more believable if it won't just uh, break into three separate uh, uh, fragments or clusters, but it will also create some, this kind of debris at the edge of these clusters. So uh, next, uh, I will, later I will call it this cluster and this is debris. So, uh, so you should know what I mean. And uh, in this example, I'm using, I'm set my amount to 
uh, zero, but instead I'm using layer one, which means I want to all layer of the fragments at the edge of my clusters not to be part of the clusters and stay as is. So this time you can see I have much more fragments because in this case I define whole layer and again I can delete and I can add some amount but this time it will means that it will take one layer of fragments and then 61% from second layer so I will get even more uh, debris. So in this way you can control uh, what exactly you want to get, how many fragments you want to keep as debris and not be part of the clusters. And in this example, uh, as, you can, as you can see, I set here uh, my mean and max property is one. And this property allows you to define how your debris will look like. And again, in this example, uh, every fragment, every debris, uh, just a, a good old uh, Voronoi fragments, uh, they are, were not part of the clusters, but, and they just uh, stay as this. So you already see these fragments. But in this example, I am using the same setup, but I changed my mean and max. Mean I set minimum uh, set to two, and maximum is five. And uh, this property defines, uh, well actually not defined, that allows you to clusterize your debris into more complex small clusters. So they won't look like this, but Instead, they will uh, be combined in small groups and in the range of two to five uh, fragments. So this time you can see that I still have the same clusters here. Let me decrease my scale. So here you can see I have the same clusters here, but instead of having this uh, all these debris separated, or like maybe I should use this example here, you can see this fragment here and this fragment and this fragment, they are separated here. And here they are combined in one small local debris cluster. So <laughs> I understand that this is maybe just too much, but uh, well, um, this is the way <laughs> I can explain this. And as you can see, uh, using this bunch of these um, properties, you can create like big clusters and a bunch of smaller uh, fragments, uh, debris and clusters around their edge. And I guess that will make your simulation or demolition even more believable. Uh, okay, so next property is scale. And in this case, my uh, this property scale is one. And let me fragment my object now. So here's my cluster. If I will move this big cluster uh, up, you will see that I have here a bunch of debris. And uh, because I, well, actually, let me change my preview scale to very low value, okay, like this. So yeah, now you can see uh, all these debris inside. So again, I have this big clusters probably somewhere here. How many? So I have three clusters, okay. Okay, so this is another cluster and uh, all this, fragments are uh, debris, but you can see that they are very uh, packed, they are packed very close to each other, so basically you don't see any gaps between them. And again, that may look not so real. So using this scale property, here I decreased to 0.4, uh, setup is the same. And uh, let me fragment now. So now if I will move the same clusters, you'll see now that there are a gap between these fragments here, between these debris here. So when you will demolish your object, they will start kind of crumbling out, or there will, there will be cracks, there will be gaps between these uh, clusters. So you'll see that it's not just uh, packed uh, close to each other, uh, but there are actually some small debris, they will start crumbling down, there will be gaps, and it will look much better. And next tutorial, again, I will show you more uh, real life example. For now, I'm just showing you this using these cubes just to show you the difference between uh, two property values. So in this case, I said, I just want, I want to show you how this relaxed property works. And again, right now it's zero. So I will fragment my object. 
and I'm not using any debris this time, just the three clusters again. I will move my cluster up. So here you can see the inner surface of this cluster. Again, it looks like it consists of uh, a bunch of Voronoi fragments inside. Uh, but let me now. So much fragments right now. And now let me fragment uh, object with uh, relax one. Everything's the same like in this previous example. But this time, if I will move it up, you will see that its surface. So these are two identical setups. On, the difference uh, is only this, uh, this relax property. So this time you see that uh, this time all this inside surface of cluster is relaxed and again I guess it looks much better than this surface so if you want to demolish something you can use relax and your clusters inner surface will looks uh, more real and not so artificial like in this example okay so next uh, thing I want to show you is uh, how this cluster works with other fragmentation types. So first one is splinters. Again, just the regular splinters without clustering, a bunch of splinters. This time I set my cluster count to 35. And again, you can see now it start looks like more like uh, some uh, demolished wood. In this example, I used a lower amount, 10 clusters. And again, something different and this time just five uh, clusters and uh, five percent for debris amount again so I guess this looks uh, much more real than just uh, this solo uh, splinter but again depends on what exactly you you want uh, you wanted to use but so in this way you can see how you can create like really broken wood part uh, this concave this concave shape not just the one uh, convex splinter in this case i will use cluster with slabs again example without clustering just the regular slabs and again some uh, high amount of clusters here Okay, looks better, even less amount of clusters, 15. And with small amount of debris and even uh, less amount, even uh, five clusters is 20% debris. So again, I guess looks much more interesting. In this example, I'm using radial. So much fragments. Again, example without clustering, just a regular radial fragmentation type. And this time 24 clusters with 57 amount percent amount of debris. So again, something more interesting. And finally, example of tetrahedrons, which is basically fragmentation type which is useless without clustering again here you can see how it looks like as is not so interesting and here examples of this 35 clusters so this fragment looks much more interesting and example with 15 clusters Again, very quick way to create this noisy, convex, I mean concave fragments. And example is kind of real game objects without clustering, simple Voronoi fragments. And this time I use 20 clusters.
So in this way, you can create not this simple uh, Warner fragments, but something more, not like this simple Warner uh, fragment with straight lines, but something more interesting. And again, just to show you every example here. So that was clustering. I uh, hope you will like this feature and thank you for watching.